وبيوم بدر حين تمحى وجوههم جبريل تحت لوائنا ومحمد the famous verses of poetry from Ka'b ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu as he looked out at the battlefield of Badr and he said the day of Badr the day that their faces were disgraced Jibreel alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam are standing under our banner who's going to defeat this army with Jibreel alayhi salam amongst us and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam amongst us Before the battle starts, the Prophet ﷺ says, هذا جبريل آخذ برأس فرسه عليه أداة الحرب He says, here is Jibreel alayhi salam holding the head of his horse and he is ready for battle. He's ready to go forward. This is going to now proceed and subhanAllah, the miracles that the Sahaba will witness on the day of Badr from the angels, which is the time that more companions witnessed angels than any other moment, right? So the scholars mention more people saw the Prophet ﷺ on Hajjat al-Wada' on the farewell Hajj than any other time in the Prophet ﷺ's life. More people saw Jibreel السلام, in human form on the day of Hadith Jibreel alayhi salam than any other day. And this is the day of Badr where more companions experienced the Malaika than all of the other moments of the Seerah combined. So Abdullah ibn Abbas عنهما, describes the scene that as soon as the battle proceeds, basically the Muslims are seeing their enemies get pulled off of their horses and flying right and left, and they don't even have to do anything. Umar anhu describes that moment where you're going after someone and then you hear a whip from the sky and then the person falls off the horse. So the enemies were falling without the Muslims in many cases even having to strike them, okay? So in one situation, there was a Muslim that was chasing uh, someone from the other side, as Ibn Abbas says. And just as he was going to him, he heard the sound of a whip over that, over that man. And he heard this voice, this voice that was so loud that said, Aqdim Hayzum, go forward, Hayzum. So he said that when he heard that sound, he looked up to see who it was. And then he looked back at the man and he saw that the man had fallen off of his horse and he had the scar from the lashing on his nose and his face. And SubhanAllah, it had turned green because of the severity of that strike that came to his face. So he came to the Prophet Sallallahu after that and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu about what he saw. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Hayzum was an angel from the third heaven. Now, one of the things the scholars mention is that even the kuffar, even the disbelievers, and of course, many of them were disbelievers only at the time, even they saw the angels on that day. So, Hayd ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, of course, would not become Muslim until way later. He said, there were angels on horses that were gliding between the heavens and the earth. I mean, these were men that were gliding between the heavens and the earth effortlessly, and they killed us and they captured us however they saw fit. There was nothing we could do against them. And the only logical explanation they could come to on the other side was they said this was some sort of magic or soothsaying. The same way they tried to dismiss the Qur'an by saying that this is just magic and soothsaying and, and poetry. They tried to dismiss the experience they had at Badr by saying maybe this was just some sort of supernatural force that was summoned that we can't make sense of. There's another uh, incident that took place with Abu Yusur al-Sulami radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Yusur was a very small statured man, okay? A very small statured man. And he goes up to Al-Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu on the day of Badr. Now Al-Abbas was on the side of the disbelievers, but you know, there's a difference of opinion about whether he'd already become Muslim and he was concealing it, or whether Al-Abbas was still not Muslim, but he wasn't gonna fight against the Prophet So he came out on that day because he was forced to come out, but Al-Abbas did not actually lift up his sword against any of the Muslims. So he didn't fight, technically speaking, the Muslims. But Abbas was a huge man, a very large man. So what happens is that Abu Yusr goes to him and just the idea of Abu Yusr capturing an Abbas is something that seems impossible because that's what the variation of size looks like. So Abu Yusr, he comes holding an Abbas back to the Muslims and the Muslims are looking at him with just complete shock and awe. Like there is no way that Abu Yusr was able to capture an Abbas. 
So Abu Yusuf comes and he's excited. And he's saying, Ya Rasulullah, there was this man that came. I've never seen him before. And he helped me tie him up and he put him together and then he told me, go forth. And the Prophet Sallallahu he smiled and he said, Laqad a'anaka alayhi malakun kareem. It was a noble angel that helped you capture Al-Abbas and bring him back. Now, there's an incident that takes place in Mecca that's also describing what happened in Badr. Abu Rafi' radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was the servant of Al-Abbas, he says that I was sitting with the wife of Al-Abbas, who we know was a Muslim, Lubaba. Lubaba, Umm Al-Fadr radiallahu ta'ala anha. So I was sitting with Lubaba and Abu Lahab was pacing nervously back and forth, waiting for the news from Badr. So he's, he's there, he's already a Muslim and he's keeping it to himself. Lubaba is a Muslim and she's keeping it to herself. Or rather, she is a Muslim, but she's not being threatened, uh, you know, because she's she's the woman of the house, and so no one is really touching her. They're leaving her alone. And Al Abbas is either a secret Muslim or someone who's not hostile to the Prophet ﷺ, but he's on the other side, right? He's he's fighting technically against the Prophet ﷺ. So Abu Rafi' says we're sitting in the room. Abu Lahab is pacing back and forth, right, waiting for the news. And then Abu Sufyan comes. And when Abu Sufyan comes. Abu Lahab stands up and says, Mal khabar, what happened? So Abu Sufyan says to him, we found a people that were small in number, but they were not deficient in courage. They had courage that made up for their numbers. They killed us as they wished, they captured us as they wished, and they had with them these huge men, the size of mountains, that literally were filling up the space between the earth and the skies, and they were striking at us, but we couldn't strike back at them. So Abu Rafi' says, I'm listening to this and I couldn't contain myself in joy. So I stood up and I said, Tilka wallahi hiya al-malaika, tilka wallahi hiya al-malaika. I swear by Allah it was the angels. I swear by Allah it was the angels. And Abu Lahab punches him in the face and starts to beat him violently. And that's when Lubaba radiallahu ta'ala anha takes a pole and cracks it across the skull of Abu Lahab and Abu Lahab would actually die from that strike from Lubaba radiallahu ta'ala anha. So subhanAllah, that's even the way that the enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu were perceiving the angels and the ease with which the battle would flow. Now subhanAllah, the, the interaction of the Muslims with the Malaika, with the angels, was not just limited to the battle and not just limited to, you know, feeling the presence and seeing the, the enemies fly. But the Sahaba even experienced something else. When Jibreel alayhi salam was with the Prophet sallam, he was also giving the Prophet sallam the command and the process of Salat al-Khawf, how to pray in the middle of a battle. So this prayer where, you know, some of the troops go, they pray the first rak'ah, they come out, another group grows and uh, prays the first rak'ah, they switch out. So it's a very interesting way of doing the Salah under those circumstances. And the Sahaba could feel the warmth of the hands of Jibreel alayhi salam and the angels as they were arranging their rows for salah. So subhanAllah, they could feel the hands of the angels putting them in their rows in prayer because even then the angels were straightening the rows for salah. SubhanAllah, even in the midst of battle, even in the midst of salat al-khawf. So they encountered Jibreel Islam and they encountered the Malaika in ways on the day of Badr that they would remember for all times. Now, was it only memorable to the Sahaba, to the people, or was it memorable to the angels as well? Jibreel السلام, comes to the Prophet وسلم, and this is a hadith in Bukhari and he says to the Prophet وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, how do you, the companions, see the veterans of Badr amongst you? Like what position do you give them? And the Prophet وسلم, said, Khiyarana, they're the best of us. We put the veterans of Badr on a pedestal and that pedestal, by the way, would last throughout the entire time of the Sahaba. Like someone who was from the Badriyun, the people of Badr, always maintained a position that gave them a status amongst the Sahaba. And Jibreel islam says what? He says, كَذَلِكْ هُمْ عِنْدَنَا خِيَارُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ He said, you know what, Ya Rasulullah, even the angels, the Badriyun from the angels, the angels that came down and fought on the day of Badr, we give them a status and they are the best amongst us.